Hello internet, uh, me again. Um, got a, another video today, it's going to be a short one because I've done this before already. Um, just going to do a quick uh, oil change on the A3, this one behind me. That one, the Weiss car. Um, so it's going to be the same as normal, to be honest, but with one addition. Um, sometimes when you start it up from cold, and it's done it since we've had it really, um, after many changes of oil too, uh, one of the hydraulic tappers has got just a little tap to it, nothing major, as I change it, but it's just a slight little tap. Um, goes away when the oil's warmed up, but at first you get uh, a pronounced tap, uh, just to be heard over the sound of a pronounced diesel tap, if that makes sense. I'll start it up in a minute and we'll see if we can identify it. But um, what I'm going to do is chuck some of this in, Liquid Molly. Um, it gets very good reviews from a lot of people. A few people say you shouldn't use it because it ruins your engine, but... Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so I'm going to get the car started up, get it warm, and then what you've got to do is leave it on idle, or put this in, leave it on idle for 10 minutes, and then drain your oil. So that's what I'm going to do, and see if the tapper noise goes away. Let's quickly start it up and see if it's still there. Probably won't, because obviously I want to show it, you won't be able to see it. You wouldn't believe I washed both cars yesterday, would you? Bloody birds. So, got the bonnet up, um, I'm just going to start it up, like I say, see if we can hear this tap. Uh, put the seat back, because obviously the wife has tiny legs. Uh, Punch in. A little preheat. There you go. Right, let's see if you can hear this. Well, it's obviously the diesel rattle. And I'll be honest, it's not really doing it at the moment. <laughs> As I kind of suspected, just the diesel rattle. But anyway, let's get it warmed up, let's get some molly in it, and drop the oil. There you go, she's nice and warm. The oil temperature's at 90 degrees, and obviously the, uh, the water temperature's at 92, so we're good to go. So I'm going to switch it off for a second, chuck the liquid molly in, and then let it run for 10 minutes. And in she goes. And off go the thumbs. <laughs> so while well, that's all ticking away doing its goodness, here's what we've got to do today. We've got uh, air filter, oil filter is up there, uh, fuel filter and I'm using drive tech this time. Heard some very good reports about this and it's recommended for VW engines so uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, oh, sun's out. <laughs> Ah, back in the messy clothes again. I think I'm going to sell all my clothes because I spend half my life either in these or in my dressing gown nowadays working from home. Hmm. Right, it's been about 10 minutes. It's been ticking over nicely. Um, smells very diesel fuel. So um, let's switch her off and uh, let her cool down a little bit and get this oil changed. Now, because everything is so hot at the moment, because obviously running it and putting the, the liquid molly into it, I think what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do it the, the wrong way round, basically. Um, get the air filter changed, do the fuel filter, and then hopefully it would have uh, cooled down enough for me to get underneath it. Uh, don't fancy doing it at the moment, because obviously I'll burn myself. <laughs> So as you can see, there's, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws in total. Uh, I think I've got them all, so let's just give it a pull. Like that, and it should easily pop off. That's if you've got all the screws out. What's the bets I've left the screws somewhere? <laughs> Got me thinking now. Screw. Ah, yes, there's a sneaky one just in there. Look at that. I knew there was a sneaky one somewhere. Caught me out last time as well. <laughs> so, as I said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sneaky one in there. And then it comes off. There you go. Right, let's have a quick look. I don't think this air filter was going to be that dirty. In fact, it's looking brand new. 
Uh, the car hasn't done a lot of miles, but uh, for the sake of what, six, seven quid, new one goes in. And it's uh, pretty clean in there as well, so okay, new one in. Uh, what I might do actually, while I've got this off, is just quickly clean the math up as well. So if you haven't seen this tool in my videos in the past, um, look back at the videos, have a look. Um, I'll show you how it works now though. These are a finger saver. I was going to say a life saver, but not really a life saver. They are definitely a finger saver. What happens is you basically ratchet open. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Um, I'll have to do it off camera. But basically, it goes on your early clips there and it compresses and locks it in place. So let me do that and I'll show you how it works. Uh, there you go. So basically it's locked in there like that and it ratchets up and it then holds itself in place, which is brilliant. So then you can just squeeze it back a bit and it's a lot, lot easier to get the pipes off from these clips. Right, I just need two hands to do this and then we'll give the math a clean. There you go. So it's just holding it like that for you, which makes it so much easier. Good little tools, so only about five off eBay. Um, I think it's called an Audi clamp tool or something like that. If you work on the Audis or even other things, um, well worth buying. So for those that don't know, this is a MAF, a mass airflow. Uh, basically measures the air going over, going into the engine through the induction system. And being a diesel, it's going to get dirty. So what I tend to use is, you can get mass cleaner, but I just use this. It's an uh, electrical contact cleaner. That's all it is. It does exactly the same job, it's exactly the same thing. Just give it a liberal good spraying and um, yeah, cleans it up. There you go, and as you can see, it uh, evaporates off. It's very good stuff, well worth doing. Okay, next little job, don't have to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just quickly take that panel out of there, and it's only really diesels that do this. Uh, they're all slightly different, so maybe you would have a panel that comes out. Uh, as you see, it's a bit crusty in there, so I'm gonna give it a blowout and make sure it's nice and clean. There you go, giving it a little blowout. The uh, protective gauze put back into place again. So there we drop the air filter in, it's as simple as that. Now what you do obviously is put your top back on again. Um, but again, need two hands for this, so join me in a minute. There you go, cover back on. Just got to uh, obviously bolt it down again or screw it down again. Um, and this is what I mean about these pliers. All you do now is basically just take that ratchet off just there and put it back into place. How easy is that? No snapping your fingers, no messing about. It's nice and easy to work with. An absolute godsend of a tool. If you're working on these things, definitely get yourself one. Right, let's get a screw back down again. Sneaky one first. Okay, so new filter in, all bolted back again. Um, all the pipes connected, all the math sensor, and everything. Uh, right, next job. Fuel filter. Um, I think they're is it M3 or M6. Can't remember. I'll tell you when I find out. So nowhere near Reeves. There you go. So it is actually a T20. So it's pretty obvious how many screws there are here. Uh, no hidden things. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. There you go. Odd number. So uh, let's get them undone. And uh, you will lose a little bit of fuel. Don't worry too much about it. In fact, I'm just going to get a little bit of rag just to soak it up. Um, not much comes out, but um, you do get a bit. So as you can see there, just cracked them off. I'm going to do the rest now by hand. And I'm going to have a magnet on standby. <laughs> uh, note to self, magnet completely useless. Um, they are, <laughs> I think titanium. Uh, they're not magnetic. You've got to love the Audi's four thoughts, haven't you? Look, they've got little areas so you can specially put your bolts in. Okay, all the screws are out, and again, thank you, Eddie, for being so thoughtful. No, they're not going anywhere up there. All right, so all we do now is pull the top off, 
I think there's a rubber seal under here if I remember rightly. So it does take a little bit of manipulating. I might actually need to get a pry in there because I think once the rubber seal's in there, they do suck down quite hard. Right, give me a sec. There you go, little pry, they soon come off. And there you have it. Obviously what you want to try and do is leave a fair bit of fuel in there if possible because obviously when you can start it up again um, you want that pretty much primed and full. Right, I'm going to do this off camera, change that over because uh, it's going to get messy. There you go, just found another use for a jiffy bag. Hold on. Right, so we've got blue sky there, sunshine somewhere up there and um, snow. Only in the UK. It's snowing. Look. It's actually snowing. <laughs> How ludicrous. Right, looking down there, I think I want to clean that out. Because that's not looking good. Don't like that at all. Right, sucked all that mess out of the bottom. I'm going to give that a good clean up in there. And I've got some diesel in the can somewhere, so I'll fill that up before. I'll put the lid back on. Right, all cleaned out and a nice new filter to put in. So, uh, yep, got an O-ring as well. Ooh, look, brand new O-ring. Right, let's get these all back together. There you go, it's all back together again. Um, when you do this, obviously, you're putting a new O-ring uh, on, O-seal, <laughs> O-ring on. Um, so give yourself, or give it a good, good blast with the old WD-40 around it. Um, and ease it on nice and gently, bit by bit by bit. Uh, and it will then, kind of snap in at the very last minute right bolt her back up uh, I put fuel in there before obviously to, to top that up again so um, yeah put it back to, together again put the screws back on it and then I'm gonna get it jacked up and we'll get the oil dropped so there you go screws are back in now something I get roasted for a lot in my comments is torque settings now I've kind of explained this before I used to work on a assembly line in an engineering factory still work at the same place but not on the lines anymore um, so every day we were doing up bolts and after a while you get to know how it feels to talk up a bolt to its spec um, and I've always done that and never had a problem but today I'm going to spoil you these are five newton meters and my torque wrench is set to five newton meters so today we're going to do the job properly we're going to bolt them up to five newton meters how exciting is this <laughs> Five newton meters. Next. So there you go, all talked up properly. Would I have done them to the same torque? Yeah, probably. But hey, I've used a torque wrench. Go me. So just to double check, obviously they're talked up. So what I would do is put my thumb there and just heal it like that. And that's exactly where I'd have taken it to. So I loosened that one off, tightened it up. There you go. That's what I loosened off and tightened up. I've just done it by hand. Okay, they all feel good. Right, I'm just going to check out what I've done by hand. Hold on. There you go, proper method. Torque wrench on there. There you go. Exactly the same. Yeah, I know. Big Ed. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Comments. Blah, blah, blah. Hate. Um, yeah, but Honestly, when you've been working on the assembly line for many, many years, you get to know what a bolt can and can't take. Uh, a lot of them, to be honest, on the engines we used to produce were done by hand and never had a problem. Well, apart from all the hundreds that failed in the field. But moving on. Yeah, you know we had snow a minute ago. <laughs> Sunshine again. Okay, we're up in the air and it's time to set the tray off. Now this one's got a metal under tray. I'm told it's um, a convertible thing. Uh, mine's got a plastic one, this is metal. Um, if you haven't seen me taking this off before, you're not going to see it today because it's really boring. Look at the old videos and uh, you can see it in there. We're going to set that panel off and then we can get access to the drain plug and get the oil out. Well there you go. There's a nice quick easy five minute job said nobody that ever took one of these off. They are an absolute pain in the backside. Yeah, it's box city. It really is a pain in the backside to get these off. But I believe, and they have to be quite rigid because it's convertible, allegedly. I don't know, I'm not an early designer. Right, that's off. 
all I need to do is get some plug out now, right under there, and drain the oil. Right, what I need to do, I've got my trusty old green washing up bowl, which I've had for years, and that drops my oil. Um, this one, as I recall, is also a bit messy because, let me turn you around, yeah, your plug is up there, and that bar is right in the way. It's a really bad design, so what it does is splashes on the bar, and it goes absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to get loads of rags and a bit of uh, sand, I think, before I do anything. And, uh, yep, yeah, I'm going to crack that bolt off, drain the oil. I'm not going to film that because that would be just boring, wouldn't it? Let's be honest, uh, even more boring than most of my videos. Right, catch you in a minute. On the note of the sump plug, I um, splashed out. Bought myself a brand new one. Look at that, go me. And for reference, they are 19 mils. Quality. Phew, stinky old diesel oil. Yeah. Okay, next task is get the filter changed. And there you go, that's that little beauty down there. I think, if I'm right in saying, it's 32 mil. Uh, something like that, let me check. Snow again. <laughs> Crazy weather. Yeah, at least this is coming down now. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. We've got blue sky up there, a bit there. Sun up there somewhere. And hell. Oh dear. Right, let's get back to what I was doing before I got so rudely distracted by the weather. Um, I'm going to battle through it because I'm hard. Right, oil filters down there, 32 mil socket on there like that. Um, I'm going to need a knuckle because that pipe's in the way. I'm not taking that off, let's be honest. Or will I? Hmm. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe it's just easier to take the pipe off. Um, bear with. Yeah, definitely easy just to drop the pipe down. And there's a pressure switch in the way as well. Um, you want to get yeah, nice and straight on that if you can, and then it will just take a little, with two hands, a little crack. There you go, just cracked it off, so it will be a little bit stiff because it's plastic on plastic, um, as everything is nowadays, but it will wind out pretty easily. And when you get to the end, what you've got to be careful of now, there is going to be oil. You can't get around this bit, there will be oil. Um, so let me move everything out of the way that is in the way. And of course that's just going to do what the hell it wants, yep. Um, I'm going to get the socket out, because I want to... Oh, blow me neck. Yeah, okay, I'm going to drop the socket down there, that's what I'm going to do. Hold on a minute, I need two hands. Okay, I'm just going to get my hand in there, unscrew it by hand. And the very last bit, the filter assembly cap. And also the filter should come out as one job lot. There you go, so let it drain just a little bit. Lift it out like that. And then try and get it out without spilling it everywhere, which is an almost impossible task. And there you go, one filter. Oh, you've got to love diesel oil. Yeah, horrible smelly stuff. Uh, right, again, you have got a uh, O-ring there. Take the O-ring off, put the new one on. New filter will go in, and then put it back together again. Right, bear with. <laughs> Messy job. Right, new O-rings on. There you go, you just pop it off and put the new one on like that. And then the filter, basically, you just put it on top there and give it a little bit of a like that. It is spring loaded, but it needs to click in there. So as with the fuel filter, just put a little bit of oil around your uh, your new O-ring there, and then we've got to manipulate it back in again, which is tight, and not particularly easy. On this, uh, there you go. Right now, one of the most important things when you've got that on there, make sure you do it by hand. And what you want to do is put no pressure on it at all, let it find its own threads. If you cross thread this, okay, you've got an aluminium body there and you've got a plastic cap and it really isn't gonna play nicely and you are gonna screw it up. And if you cross thread it, you're gonna need a new cap. And I can't imagine with Audi, they're gonna be cheap. Uh, right, so that is screwed on by hand, as you can see, it's nice and free. Didn't, uh, didn't give me any resistance at all, which means it isn't cross threaded. I'm now gonna bolt it back up again. And I believe it's, oh, what does it say, 25 newton meters? Five newton meters? Um, yeah, it's going to be my ooh, measurement, I think. There you go, as I say, they don't need much. Get them to the point where they're bit, and then, oh, I can't do this with one hand, can I? Yeah, let's try. So basically, like that, a little bit of, okay, just nip it. Doesn't need to be really super tight, just needs to be nipped up. Right, that's on, let's put that screw back in, that back together. Put the sump bolt in, fill it with oil, and we're done. There you go, so all back together again. That goes there, like that. That on there, like that. 
Right, there's my oil fill. Let's get my special funnel and let's slump some oil in it. Oh, sub plug first, don't forget. New sub plug. Okay, as I've mentioned before, with sump plugs, uh, it is a alloy sump, so you don't want to go mad. So you don't need to be welding these together. All you need is a little bit of tightening up. And remember, this one's a new one, so the crush washer is going to be a little bit soft at first. So just get it to the point where, like that, pretty much, it's at about five to eight newton meters. Okay, that's all you need. You don't need to hang off it. You just need to get it snug. Okay, the gasket will do its work, and uh, if you do get any leaks, which is very doubtful, they'll show pretty much straight away. Right, top her up. Now some people have laughed at my special funnel, but it's one of the best ones you'll ever get. There you go, just an old pot bottle. Does the job perfectly. Plenty to aim at. Easy pouring. No drama. So she's had about three and a half uh, litres now. So... Uh, if you get a stick of pool, that needs a clean, hold on, there you go, clean dipstick, pop her in, whee, <laughs> slab her down, pull her up, and there you go, at the moment we're at the top level, but obviously when we start it up, that's going to change. So, I'm just going to start her up now, um, and again, start her up on tick over, don't want to be revving the nuts off it, not, uh, not yet, because all the oil's not got everywhere it needs to be, so be very cautious. Put your cap back on, start her up, and just let her tick over for a minute just to get that oil circulating. Oh, this is sound any quieter. No, 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 it's a diesel. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm not hearing that ticking, not yet. Right, oh, that should be enough time, just about 30 seconds or so to get the oil around. Switch it off, let it rest for a minute, then check the oil again. Oh, somebody's going for it on the bikes. <laughs> so, there you go, as you can see, we're about halfway now. So just add a little bit more to it, you know, about half a litre, nothing much. And that uh, will just about do us. So there you go, we're just below the top level now, which uh, is just where I want it. Um, don't overfill these, uh, don't chuck all the oil in in one job lot, because it doesn't need five litres, it takes about four and a half, yeah, thereabouts. Um, but I'll check it again in a few days or a week, and uh, depending on how much we use it, and just make sure it's okay. But as long as you're about midway, you know, you won't go far wrong. Right, so that's about done up here. Just got to put the cover on the engine. Uh, put the cover down there, back on again. Which will be uh, a half hour job, because it's a pain in the backside. And then uh, that's it for another year. Right, the panel's back on again, all bolted up. Um, plenty of uh, copper grease liberally splashed about on the bolts. Uh, because most of this assembly is uh, aluminium. Uh, yes, that is aluminium for uh, all the people that pronounce it wrong, all my American friends and uh, watchers. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so, the weather has now turned. Turned pretty damn nasty, to be honest, and it's turned into sleety rain now, as you can see, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, it's time to pack up and call it a day. So, stop videoing, Reeves, and get yourself sorted. <sighs> what joy! Right, <laughs> that was a rush round. The weather's got nasty. Snow, sleet, sunshine, oh, it's everything today. Back on the ground, everything's bolted up. Chock under that wheel has gone. Chock under this wheel has gone. I'm hiding in the garage, which is now a mess again. Oh, I'll tell you what, lease cars are looking very attractive nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Even the cat's trying to find solace in the garage. <laughs> I've got a security camera up there, that's going to be great footage later. Right, where was I? So, um, yeah, that's about it then. Um, I'm going to call that a day. Um, what do I do? Why do I do this? I really don't know. I have to say, laying under there at the very last minute with my belly on show, it's not good with all this rainy stuff coming down. It's very cold. Right, um, so again, hope somebody found this informative. Um, hopefully it was entertaining for you. And uh, catch you next time, guys. Have a great day. And yes, you know what the final job always is. Get rid of your oil responsibly. Put it in cartons.
take it down the recycling centre. Oh, by the way, <laughs> sunny and blue skies again now. And finally, the easiest job of all. There you go. Service interval reset. I'm glad I've got the car finished. <laughs> I'm not going out in that. Look at the state of that now.